extremely thin, high quality Italian leather. Today, one of those videos that for sure will bother some wannabe fashion bloggers or even some that are already quite known. If you are one of those, today I'm gonna expose your incompetence. Mm, Giacomo might sound a bit too harsh, uh, not so elegant maybe. Let's clarify something. Being elegant doesn't mean to have a caress for everybody. Remember that still kinda a century ago, gentlemen were not stepping back when they were invited to a fight with swords. Nowadays, our lives are so boring and sad that instead of swords, we handle conflicts through these things. Let me be even clearer and avoid misunderstandings. When somebody is super passionate, when somebody is a lover of a subject and he decides to spread what he knows, he has all my respect. On the other hand, when somebody presents himself like a super expert influencer of the subject, he better know what he's talking about. Anyway, let's jump into today's topic. In fact, we're here to talk about the two main classic shoes for men, Oxford and Derby. And yes, they are classic shoes for men, but nowadays they are extremely popular and actually I recommend you to consider them also among women. The point here is to be able to distinguish when we are in front of a Oxford and when we are in front of a Derby. As you can easily imagine, they both get their names. Guess from what? Well, from the town of Oxford and from the town of Derby. Usually I like to, to have the support of some pictures, but uh, today it's much better to show you with my fingers. So let's start from the Oxford. In Italy, we call this type of shoes also Francesina, in case uh, it will happen to you to be there around to have some shopping in the Bel Paese. I heard and read a lot of different ways how to understand if this is an Oxford, if this is a Derby. There is one thing you have to look at. One thing. This area, the area of the laces. That's it. I chose a particular type, so not a super classy built Oxford, and the same for the Derby that you're going to see in a minute, because I don't want you to mm, get lost too much in technicalities, because in this case, they would just mislead you and create some uh, doubts in case you find a pair of shoes that are not exactly built how the classiest rules would indicate. But let me introduce you two names, just to sound a bit more sophisticated, let's say, if you want to talk about this topic with your friends. We call the side part, that here is only partial, as you can see, quarter. The quarter ends with the facing, that is actually where the laces are in, and the frontal part is called vamp. Not the very frontal, not the, the toes, but this part in front of the laces. So we can say the part between the toes and the laces is the vamp. His extension can be extremely big or extremely small, as I mentioned, depending if they are built in a very classy way or in a bit more modern way like this one. By the way, look at these shoes. I think they have kind of 15 years, so it means that I have them uh, since I was a teenager. 
be sure at the time I was not polishing them regularly, despite of what my father was suggesting me. And for a while, they've been also my everyday shoes. Still, look how they survive the time. Yes, you see their life, but in leather, this is cool. You see really the life of the leather. Plus, this leather is extremely thin, high-quality Italian leather. Really. When you buy a good product, you never regret it. So, back to the topic. As you can see here, the, the quarter with the facing goes inside the vamp. They end inside of the vamp. They disappear, in a way, in the vamp. We could also say that the tongue, the part, the inner part under the laces, the tongue is kind of an extra piece, you know? Doesn't belong to the facing, doesn't belong to the vamp. Is an extra piece there. We will get a bit better what I just said now that I'm going to show you the derby. Here is a derby, as you can see, the quarter. Also, this one is not built in a classy way, okay? The quarter ends on the vamp. You see? The quarter with the facing ends on the vamp. Plus the tongue, you see, the tongue is all together with the vamp. So basically the tongue is an extension of the vamp, differently, you remember, from uh, the Oxford. So that's the way you can spot if you're in front of a Oxford or a Derby. Let me tell you something more that really drives me. Mm. You see these things here, these kind of holes? This is called brogering. You might hear somebody say, no, oh, those shoes are brogue. Mm. Brogue is not a type of shoes. Oxford is a type of shoes. Derby is a type of shoes. Brogue, no. Brogue is this type of decoration. Brogue, brogering, okay. It exists in a lot of versions. We could talk an hour about that. It can be applied both on Derby or Oxford. But please watch out because there are a lot of people out there, in particular online, they present themselves as super experts and they confuse the word Derby and the word Brogue. Derby and Brogue are not synonyms. Doesn't matter what you will hear, read out there, Derby and Brogue are not synonyms. Now you might be wondering, oh, when should I wear an Oxford? When should I wear a Derby? Well, let me give you a little chart of formality. In general, black is more formal than brown and whatever other color. Oxford is more formal than Derby. Brogering looks extremely cool, extremely elegant, even a bit extrovert, but be aware that will decrease the level of formality of your shoes. I hope you will find really useful this video about Oxford and Derby shoes. About this topic, uh, believe me, we could spend an entire day talking, investigating, describing. But this, what I told you today, is already a step forward in your path to elegance. Ciao!